broken play. Welcome back, man. Feels good to be back. Let me get a little shit off my chest, man. Uh, <clears throat> the other day, Thad, I'm I'm watching the game, and they they Stephen A. Smith got a little show on there. The motherfucker is using shit from my show for his show. Bitch, get your own shit. A lot of things. When I came in this industry, you know what I mean? I've been in here six weeks. And my goal and my, my, my whole pride and, and, and integrity, everything I stand for, I said I'd never let one of these reporters try me on some fuck shit. Yeah. Six weeks in, this nigga try me. You have a nigga that I had on my show. You had him sit on your show. And you said some shit that he said on my show. And ain't no motherfucker mention me. Mm. Oh, bitch, you got me fucked up. Word. Yeah, we didn't get in the game for this. And I see that's why a lot of people stop early and they get discouraged. No, bitch, you just opened up the motherfucking door. Because now I know you watch my shit. Yeah. You can't make that shit up. Man, I want y'all to put the insert in when the nigga reading the shit like he wrote the question. Before I let you on out of here, okay, who's going to win this series and who's going to win the series in the Eastern Conference? I'm not going against LeBron. I ain't going to get LeBron. Anybody, hey, listen, man, if you come to my grandmama porch... You the rest of the yams at his auntie house. You know what I mean? Eat barbecue you know on my mean? porch right. with my exactly. grandmama the year before she died. On Mother's Day, no wow. less. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That's love. That's and, love. And, and that that mixed with all of the other phenomenal feats he's been able to achieve. I'm not going against... I ain't going against LeBron. Motherfucker, well, I will push your shit backwards. Backwards than it already is, nigga. <clears throat> but I appreciate y'all tuning in to Broken Play, man. It's a, it's a wonderful feeling. It's a wonderful feeling to be back. Let me read some comments. Yes, what fuck you talking about? Let, on a positive note. Yes. Let that nigga distract me a little bit. <laughs> I hate random. Said I needed this. Going through it with my baby mama right now. Shaking my head. Broken play on the way. A hundred simple. This is what I do it for. That's the positivity yes. I want to see after addressing a thief, a treacherous thief. <laughs> this man going into it with his baby mama, get what he say. I don't give a fuck what you say, baby. Broken play just dropped. And that's what we do it for. Miss T, Nav, you should give an aspiring local artist or a subscriber an opportunity to come up with the intro song for this show. Make it into a contest. I think that would be dope. Miss T, do it, baby. Well, we never gonna stop you from doing what you wanna do. You send it in and we like it, it's the intro song. You send it in, we don't like it, we gonna email it and block your ass. It's simple as <laughs> that. So yeah, you just started the contest. Appreciate you, Miss T. And that's why I like the show. Women like the show. Whether they know about sports or not. Oliver Walker, <clears throat> I don't even watch sports. But man, I fuck with you now. After watching this show, shit, I might start doing prize picks my damn self. Thanks for introducing me to some money now. Yes. You're welcome, King. Clap it up for that, man. It's, it's rare you find people to say thanks and have manners and shit like that they need to have. And we love it. Jack Thrill, y'all got Magic Johnson in the Bulls jersey. <laughs> Nigga, fuck you. <laughs> have some respect for Errol Jordan. <laughs> I don't know if it's me. This nigga started to look worse and worse. Every week. Every week. That look like the nigga that uh off the Tyler Perry show. You know, I mean not the Tyler Perry movie. That was Chino and his wife kept doing a bad. <laughs> you remember then he got hurt and she had to nurse the nigga back to life. I know what you're talking about. Oh, uh, what that shit? Uh Dyra of Mad Black. Yeah. 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 Yeah, you dirty bastard. Man, before we go on to the show, and I appreciate the comments, we have to say rest in peace to the legend Jim Brown, man. Give him a moment of silence. Pioneer. And, and the thing about Jim Brown that I like, my uncle used to tell me stories about Jim Brown. Jim Brown, a lot of people didn't know because he acted as well, and he was an activist. But he was a cold-ass running back. 
Way before, way before, you know what I'm saying, you seen them other running backs, he used to run them motherfuckers over. And he got out the NFL in his prime. Yeah. So ain't no telling what kind of records he could have. Think about the NFL now. Imagine, uh, what's your boy for the Titans? Derrick Henry. Imagine Derrick Henry with a team full of white, white boys. Get the fuck out of his way. That's how Jim <laughs> Brown was. And my favorite Jim Brown moment was watching any given Sunday with Jamie Foxx. You know he was he, a defensive was a, coach. coach yeah. yeah. Hey, you sitting on the couch. What you doing? You ain't getting no money if you ain't on prize picks. Stop playing. Prize picks. Look, if you put down anything up to 100, prize picks going to match it with the promo code. Let's just say you put down 100. They match that 100. Now you got up to 200. And do you know if you threw a six pick, you can win up to 25 times the money? Six picks. Just say you got six for sure picks and you don't put 100 on it. That's $2,500. Stop playing with prize picks. I done did it. I got friends who done done it. Prize picks don't even hold your money. And we got some good games coming up. Y'all playing. The finals is on the way. It's baseball on there, NASCAR, soccer, even if you're not into basketball. But if you're into basketball, I can get you some picks. I can't tell you what to do on soccer. But I'm willing to help. <laughs> Man, well, stop playing. Type in the promo code, Broken Play. That's the only way. Broken Play going to get you the money to help with your picks. Shout out to Prize Picks. Uh, let's get into it. Devin Haney against Loma. Did y'all see the fight? Yeah, we saw it. What you think, Thad? Cause before I say what I'm going to say. Man, I think it was a good fight, man. A lot man, of shut the hell up. <laughs> Loma got cheated. What you say, Marcel? Uh, that's what I, I didn't see the fight, but I heard he got cheated, man. Man, for anything, it should have been a draw. Yeah. It, that, worst case scenario, a draw. But it was a way better fight than Tank and Garcia. Well, I told you that. <laughs> but I tell you this. That fight let me know Haney not ready for Tank or Shakur. Because if he think he is, he going to end up on the damn shirt. <laughs> <laughs> they liable to kill that damn boy in that ring. Tank! man. But I'm saying, I don't know if Haney downplayed to who he was fighting. Cause sometimes you 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 know what I mean you might sleep on somebody. Yeah. You can't do that in boxing. No. You can't do that in boxing. It, we coming off Mother's Day weekend. He probably spent time with his mom, had some cabbages. I, I don't know what you did. Man, and Loma is a real fighter, man. Before he started boxing, his dad had him in dance lessons for nine years before he even picked up gloves. That's some shit I never needed to know. <laughs> <laughs> Haney, you almost got beat by a ballerina, nigga. <laughs> Where are you finding this fucking information that nobody asked for? <laughs> that like somebody watching. I wonder if he has he ever danced. Nah, that's how you got his footwork right, man. Shit. <laughs> Haney, you need to start twerking or something, nigga, before you, <laughs> before you fight Tank. You need to get your dance lessons on because you're not ready yet. <laughs> Speaking of ready yet, Melo has retired. I wasn't ready for that, man. Yeah, that's... Surprise. Damn, Carmelo. Bro, let's clap it up for a yeah. career, man. Great career, man. Great career. Man, and, and, and the thing about Carmelo, I felt like he was always in the background of, of, of his peers. Because he came in the league with LeBron. And LeBron, you know, it was neck and neck. It was but, level, yeah. Yeah, it was level, but LeBron just... Yeah. Took off. And not saying Carmelo didn't do what he was supposed to do, but LeBron just was the face of the league. He did so many accolades and whatnot. Hard to compare. Right. Dwayne Wade was in that class. Dwayne Wade got a ring. Two rings. Three, three rings. Three of them things. Three rings. Bosh, in Bosh got two rings. So it's like he always was like, but Carmelo was the one of the best scores I ever seen. I put him right there with Kevin Durant. Top 10 all time, number nine all time scoring list. And he scored so easily. Yeah. yeah. One so, game, he had 62 points. 
nothing else. Just points. <laughs> Against the Bobcats, I remember that. And yeah. that's, that's what the type of nigga I like. <laughs> Don't pass. How, how, how can you judge me, nigga? I came to score. <laughs> Man, you could have got more. I ain't get none, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> pass what? No assists. Because it would look crazy. 62 points, two, uh, two assists, three rebounds. No, I don't get shit else but points. That's what you paid me for. Huh? That's what the fuck you paid me for. <laughs> He, it's a crazy thing. He could have got a ring if Detroit would have drafted him at number two. Oh my God! Said Darko Milicic. Marcel, I'm glad you brought that up. They got that got to be the biggest fumble in history. I don't give a damn if you had what's your boy Tayshawn Prince. I would have put Melo. Man, I don't. I would have figured some shit out. Put Tayshawn Prince. Oh damn, they had Rip Hamilton. I don't know. <laughs> shit, yeah, they, they they were unloaded, man. Yeah, but still. Carmelo with that team? Man, get Tayshaun Prince the fuck. Yeah, Tayshaun Still Prince. Because yeah. he left, what, a year or two later anyway? Yeah, he didn't. Yeah, yeah like so it's like, now man, my my biggest thing on Carmelo, and I feel bad for him, why he's scoring 62 points, going team to team, went to New York, you know what I'm saying, scoring countless of baskets, just was the ultimate score. And you got to sit down and turn on the TV and watch your wife have her titties out. That's the part that they don't want to fucking talk about. Yeah. How this man can stay focused and, and you see Tommy all on your wife's titties sucking on them <laughs> lumptious, pretty, oh my God, perfect ass nipples. It's hard to be a scorer. If, if that wouldn't have happened, the nigga would probably be number two in scoring. <laughs> Some games, shit, you got to get your mind right. That's the part they don't talk about, Marcel. Mental health, man. Yeah. <laughs> What's your favorite mellow moment? Shit. I don't know if it's really a mellow moment, though. I think, I think, uh, <laughs> I think mellow just a real ass nigga, if I must say, bro. Yeah. I, you know what I'm saying? They had all these goddamn speculations and all this shit pop up in the media. That nigga never addressed shit. <laughs> <laughs> they said he had uh, sons over there in London, sons, son. Hey, nigga, I'm a basketball player. <laughs> <laughs> Mello, what about what about the affair you had? I dropped 62 last night. <laughs> That's all I'm here to talk about is basketball. He never let you in his personal business, and I do like him for that. And then that time he was finna check Kevin Garnett. That's my favorite moment. Yeah. When that nigga whole crowd screaming, honey nut, cheerio, you remember that yeah. shit? I don't remember that. Yeah, that probably before your time, he thing. He came outside and like, yo, Carmelo outside. was outside. You, you forget he's a real New York nigga. <laughs> Doc Rivers in that coaching. They hear a knock on the... They think it's time for them to leave the uh, arena. That nigga Melo said, what the fuck is Kevin Garnett? <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, nigga, I don't play like that. All that trash talking on the court. Hey, nigga, don't play with me like that. Pulled up in their locker room. Okay. What's your favorite moment, Thad, since you asked me? <laughs> you can't top that. Nah, when he went up against Kobe in the Western Conference Finals, that was like a great matchup. And he was, they was just going back and forth. Kobe ended up winning it, but. Then Kobe didn't win 4-2? Yeah, it, yeah, was, it went to six right. games. Hey, Thad, shut the hell up, man. <laughs> He talking about going back and forth. I'm like, what? It was a great series, man. Yeah, all right. Uh, moving right along. <laughs> what, what about his? What about Marcel's? Marcel, what's yours, man? Uh, my mellow moments um, was we'll probably say college, winning the national championship as a freshman. That oh, pretty, for sure. That was pretty big at Syracuse, man. That's the only national championship they got. So mm -hmm. that was a big moment. And then every time he grabbed a rebound, I'm like, motherfucker, get out of the way, ma. I got it, motherfucker. Yeah. Fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a real one. Speaking of Melo, and you know, we just talked about Denver and the Kobe matchup with that. Denver has swept my motherfucking boy. And you notice I didn't say boys, I said my boy. Bruh, I did not see that shit coming. Bro, that shit hurt. I'm going to say this. I know I talked a lot of shit. Joker, I will never disrespect you. I will never say I could beat you one-on-one -on -one again, nigga. You are a motherfucking machine. 
Ain't no motherfucking way I would have played that whole series without saying that nigga need to be drug tested. He played a whole game. Bro, you see the motherfucker grab the rebound, bring the ball up. The nigga, them niggas never had a chance. Nigga, I was gambling with my heart. Ain't no goddamn way. Bro, it's like he don't get, he, he don't get tired. Average a triple-double for the series, man, then. Chamberlain with triple doubles in the playoff series. No, in the playoffs. Bro, and this is the difference with this whole situation. No matter how people feel about AD, he was going against AD. Yeah, AD not his size, but AD going to make you work on the defensive side. He still was in the game the whole time. I said that Jokic was going to stay in foul trouble because he had to check AD. I was absolutely motherfucking wrong. AD was in foul trouble. <laughs> Bruh, you double the nigga, you can't stop him. You triple him, you can't. He make the passes, throw that. Bro, he just, bro. All around player, bro. Man. Different. I'm going to have to say this on the episode. I just went and ordered me a Joker jersey. <laughs> That nigga is my second favorite player of all time. Wow. Wow. But shit, he, what, what? He done made me a believer. Hell no. <laughs> you know who I can check? D'Angelo <laughs> Russell, you garbage bastard. Bruh, and, and this is what a lot of people don't realize, that D'Angelo Russell. I felt like he was due for one good game. Yeah. Prize picks had him at 10 points. I said, this game four. LeBron needs some people to step up. It's going to be D'Angelo Russell. The garbage bastard had four points. Never again, nigga. <laughs> I don't follow him on Instagram, and he don't follow me on Instagram. I went to his page, and I blocked that motherfucker. <laughs> I don't want no interaction with you ever, nigga. Because people forget when people play basketball good, play football good, you forget the little shit that they do. Y'all don't remember he snitched on Nick Young? Yeah, never forget. He been a lame-ass <laughs> nigga. We never should have been fucking with him. <laughs> but sometimes somebody start playing great basketball, you forget. But never again I will forget. D'Angelo Russell, you was, a, you was now in the Garbage Bouster Hall of Fame. <laughs> Once you get in that Hall of Fame, you can't get out. I don't give a fuck if you gonna score 93 points a game. You was a garbage bastard. And I will remember you that for life. So it's him, wait, so it's him and Sabonis in there now? Him and Sabonis, number okay. two garbage <laughs> bastard. And last but not least, DeAndre A. You was a garbage <laughs> bastard. I'll never forget you being a garbage bastard. Speaking of, once you in there, you can't come out. <laughs> Tony Allen has just <laughs> <laughs> Been got he got some prison time on the way. The nigga was staying in health benefits. Him, Terrence Williams, and a couple more players. How much? How much did they get, Marcel? Do you know? You got your uh, stats. They received over two hundred sixty-five thousand for chiropractor services and one hundred fifty-five thousand for dental services. Bro, that's under five hundred thousand. Tony Allen, you dumb motherfucker. <laughs> Nigga, you could have go played in Taiwan with Dwight Howard and got that. Bro, Thanks. I'm not going to judge a nigga for scamming. I done did it before. <laughs> but nigga, you could have got unemployment and got that. Nigga, you was unemployed? <laughs> you went in the league? What the fuck are you doing? That, now, that's just stupid, Tony Allen. You could have been over there in Taiwan locking up motherfuckers. But now you locked up. You had great defense. Now, Terrence Williams, I don't blame you for doing it. Ain't nobody we're going to pick your ass up. <laughs> you should do your time with pride. Oh, like we said, Spurs landed. Uh, what been money on? Victor Wap Bada Boop Bop. Hey, all I know, that nigga's a hooper. Yeah. And it, speaking of hooping, we got to see what LeBron going to hoop at next year because he. He talking like shit after that. Joke, if you make LeBron retire, I'll never forgive you for that shit. He's not retiring, bro. That's all cap, bro. Hey, but he might leave LA. He ain't leaving LA. 
His, so son, who his son going to USC. He's not leaving LA. All right, you're right. That does make sense. <laughs> he might leave. Who gives a fuck? <laughs> 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 who gives a fuck? Trade AD for Kyrie. Now, that's make a it make sense. Yeah. It gotta make be it some more. Sense. You need no matter how much we give AD some slack, that is that is lopsided ass drink. <laughs> AD will get over there and be scoring 50, 17, and 9. <laughs> When we come back, man, we got some highlights. Uh, the heat still cooking. Um, Jamal Murray. So when we get back, we're going to talk about some highlights. And you know we got to get into them low lights. Unbroken play. got to come up with your own theme song sometime. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let's get into these highlights. The goddamn heat. I was one of the people I didn't I didn't I didn't give them a chance. I I thought they had no chance against the Celtics. They are proving me wrong. Jimmy Butler nigga. I don't know what you doing. What you on, but nigga, you would not stop. Jimmy Butler has been going crazy. And, and I think the longer his hair get, the worse the worse the ass whooping gonna be for anybody. Cause the thing about it, I felt like when he put that weave in his head, he said, I gotta get. He realized how, how long he had to get his hair. He said, when I get my hair long, I'm finna whoop ass. I don't know what I don't know what it is about the hair. But he been going crazy. Speaking of crazy, Gabe Vincent. They up 3-1, don't get me wrong. But nobody seen this coming. Yeah, the Boston, they avoided the sweep. And I knew they was going to avoid the sweep because of Jalen Brown. He from Atlanta. <laughs> the Lakers needed an Atlanta nigga on their team. Atlanta niggas don't get swept. Nigga might lose, but they not going to get swept. LeBron need an Atlanta nigga on his team. Just, it could have been a nigga. If, if Tristan Thompson would have been from Atlanta, they would have been straight. You got to pick up your Atlanta nigga when you go into the playoffs. He not going to get swept. Bam been playing good. The whole Heat team been playing good. Who your favorite Heat unsung hero, Marcel? Uh, Max Struss was Struess because he's been winning me some money on the live bet so hard. You been fuck Struess on the live entries on prize picks. Yeah. Hey, Kevin Love, secret weapon. He gonna get them rebounds and he gonna get them points. Prize picks tap in. Who you like on there, Thad? He hit or miss, man. Um, I think Duncan Robinson is a real secret weapon. He can get off the bench. Yeah. Some good shots. But he, he, he two, not, points, two points last night, Duncan Robinson. Yeah, he ain't consistent, <laughs> don't that? Dad, I think sometimes you be get on ESPN reading they shit. Nah, man. And that's the shit we finna start around here. If you don't have your own fucking thoughts and your own analytics, <laughs> I believe you the one who leaked my shit to Stephen A. All right, I trust you, Dad. Dad ain't never got unprofessional. That nigga said, what, nigga? You calling me a snitch, nigga? No. Highlight, Jamal motherfucking Murray. Whew. Boy, we seen how Denver could be with a healthy Jamal Murray and that motherfucking Joker. I would never just call him Jokic. He is motherfucking Joker. Man, them two... That's boy. Miles, um, first player ever to average 30 points per game while shooting 50, 40, 90 in the conference finals. And 50, 40, 90 is 50 percent from the field, 40 percent from three point land, and 90 percent from the free throw line. Can I ask you who was checking him? Uh, D'Angelo Russell. And that's why you is a low light. <laughs> that's how we're gonna start our low lights on D'Angelo Russell. <laughs> Nigga. I would never call you D-Lo again, nigga. <laughs> Nicknames is for niggas who can hoop. Yeah. Nigga, I need to know your middle name too, bitch. 
D'Angelo Bernard Russell. <laughs> Bro, that shit is pathetic. Speaking of pathetic, Jason Tatum. I won't blame Jalen Brown for them being down 3-1. I want to blame Jason Tatum. And you know why? Not that Jason Tatum can't hoop. He can hoop. But he, he, he pick and choose. This is my thing. If we down 30 points, coach, I want to stay in the motherfucking game. Boston Celtics start bringing niggas out the crowd I've never seen. Because them players, them players went on that goddamn team. I never knew Boston Celtics had that many white people on their damn bench. Bro, they brought six white people in in the end of the game. That don't help my prize picks. Nigga, we can't put they, no entry on them niggas. I didn't even know you niggas was on the team. Name some of them white players. Uh, uh Sam Hauser, Mike Muscula, Peyton Pritchard, uh, Burnett, Kurt, Kurt, well, he's the one to be jumping in the air. Who gives a damn? <laughs> Bro, them players are not on prize picks. As a coach, nigga, put the prize picks players in the game at all times. You got niggas losing money, you stupid bastard. <laughs> you down by 30. What, don't, what the hell are they going to do? Oh, I just want to see if they'll be ready for No, nigga, they not going to play next game. That's why y'all down 3-1. You, uh, you saw Ant-Man at the game? The, yeah, the, you know I saw my dog. <laughs> Shout out to Ant Man, nigga. He probably just seeing what the fuck going on. He probably gonna see who he can put on, you know, on his team and whatnot. I wanna, if I could build a team, I would have Ant Man, Jalen Brown, LeBron James, Joker. Nigga, I play four against five. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even need five players, nigga. I don't even need five players, nigga. Them four alone, we'll go whoop everybody's ass. Four verse five. You let man, Thad, I'm telling you. <laughs> Who's some low lights you done seen, Thad, recently? Man. The Lakers, man. Damn, that nigga said the whole team. Not LeBron. Bro, LeBron did all he could do. And matter of fact, I'm going to put you with the highlights, LeBron. That's the only team that gets swept by the Nuggets in the postseason. Bro. The man had 21 in the first quarter, 31 in the first half. What do you want from a 38-year-old? He went out swinging. Man, I hate to say this, but if he can go out like that, he could have been doing that the whole series. He was holding back. And that's how they got swept. This might be Thad last day. <laughs> I never seen a nigga who, who, who want to leave so bad. Nigga, just let me know you don't like you don't like being here. No, that's not it. <laughs> you can tell when nigga got so many jobs. You know he do shit with eighty five South. He do shit with Port Mine. This shit probably beneath him. Nigga, just leave. Cause you talking crazy. I'm not gonna disrespect LeBron in this motherfucker. Damn. Nah, truth be told. That motherfucking AR, Austin Reeves. When you said you him, nigga, you are him. Nigga, I feel like white man can't jump too should have been revolved around you. There's no way Jack Harlow should been playing that shit when they got you, Facts. nigga. Oh, you don't like Jay Harlow? He can't play. He can't hoop. He's trash. You seen him at the celebrity game? He's horrible about it. So you, you feel like a nigga really got... So you think Woody Harrelson in the first Woody, one? Yeah, he, Woody can hoop, bro. For real? Woody's nice. Woody was hooping, bro. So there weren't no stunts or nothing? Nah, that was real. Him and Wesley Snipes were really hooping out there. Wesley Snipes could hoop? No, Wesley Snipes was hooping and the white man can't jump. Man, that shit was green screen as a motherfucker. Hey, I'll I'll nigga, that was not Wesley Snipes, nigga. <laughs> that was Patrick Beverly Daddy. <laughs> Patrick Beverly Daddy <laughs> was Wesley Snipes' stunt double. And he was doing that shit. If y'all don't know who Patrick Beverly because a lot of people don't watch sports, y'all Google him. Him and Wesley Snipes, the same complexion, <laughs> and which makes sense. Man, I'm going to say this. If Denver plays Miami, it's going to be a better series than people think. Now, I, I said I won't talk bad about Joker, but I think, bam, 
would do a little damn better with gardening. I hope so. Haslam, I wish Haslam would play. Because I know Haslam don't give a damn about basketball no more. I was watching the game that nigga had blue jeans on. <laughs> nigga had blue jeans with his Miami Heat warm-up and some damn slides. I said, oh, OG ain't getting in. He don't give a damn. But you need somebody to do that to Joker. If you don't do that to Joker, he going to goddamn ball all day. Speaking of doing that to a nigga, Eric Gordon, you have just made the low lights. That nigga, <laughs> that nigga LeBron took his ass all the way to the goalpost. Nigga, stop playing with me, nigga. <laughs> nigga, we already getting beat 3-0 and you want to try me, nigga? I'm liable to beat your ass out here, boy. We got to show them a clip. Hey, start leaving in the comments who y'all like. For prize pick, because we coming, it's coming down to the wire. I know prize picks running out of shit to goddamn let us make entries on. They done let a nigga start betting on the minutes. To make wages on them. Pardon us. Not allowed. <laughs> <laughs> More or less stat projection. Hey, when we get back, speaking of prize picks, we finna put our prize picks in. We gonna talk about what's really going down. Uh, as you... Oh, shit, Marcel is in a slump. <laughs> I love laughing at niggas' pain, man. That nigga Dom is in a slump as well, man. <laughs> Damn, now. <laughs> shit ain't easy. Oh, they got him a win too. When we get back, man, we're gonna drop some uh drop some prize picks, parlays, and see how that go. Stay tuned. Woo! Come get you some money, nigga. <laughs> prize picks is in the motherfucking building. We got Fiji water. We got hot wings. Bottles of 1942. <laughs> This is my favorite segment of the show. And if you know, you know. <laughs> it, it's definitely my favorite part right now. After coming off a win, you always, you always like to look your peers right in the eyes and let them see a winner. Uh, damn, Marcel. Marcel took Jokic under fantasy, 61 and a half. That nigga had 74. Yes. Nigga, do not ever bet against the Joker. Damn, what made you do that? Oh, you. What? Yeah, you said he gonna get in foul trouble with AD. I'm like, damn, that's, he might Oh, he might that, right that's now. what happened. That, that's that gunner shit. That, that's that YSL Rico type <laughs> shit. <laughs> nigga, I didn't tell you to do that. You don't go off my... Did I pick it? No. Nigga, you picked that on your own. Ain't nobody told you to do that silly shit. Yeah. You try to blame other people for your shit. Thad, you was a winner, bro. AD free throws over five and a half. He had 11. Yeah, he inconsistent, but he gonna get to the line every time. He gonna get to that damn line. Who would foul him if it went Jokic? Gordon. He played real aggressive. Um, Michael Porter Jr., yeah, okay. Anybody, anybody in like anybody but Joker. Yeah. That's the only nigga that didn't foul. <laughs> um Greg had the same pick as me. Yvette, she took her boyfriend's pick. Aaron Gun Aaron Gordon under 13 and a half. He had 12. By the hair of the chin. Marco had the same pick as Thad. And Dom. You had D'Angelo Bernard Russell over 14 and a half points. He had eight. Typical. <laughs> that, that, that's the D'Angelo Russell we know. Now, <clears throat> we always have to be transparent with our people. This is a reshoot. Our people was here, Greg, Yvette, and Marco. They did their picks yesterday. But somehow we had to reshoot this shit again. And these niggas told us, no, they wasn't coming back. <laughs> <laughs> and do I blame them? No. <laughs> so they pick will be whatever I pick. <clears throat> so either they finna win with a nigga or lose with a nigga.
Speaking of winning with a nigga, we finna get some broken play merchandise coming soon. Nice. So y'all be on the lookout for that. Until then, y'all go buy these 39 shift leader shirts I have left. <laughs> www.navgreen.com And nigga, it's all sizes. <laughs> all right, I'm going to pop it off. Because Marco is not here. So I know in the spirit of him, we would have went with Atlanta, nigga. Jalen Brown, 13 and a half points, rebounds, and assists. 13 and a half? 32 and a half. Oh. I said 13. I apologize. 32 and a half. That would have been a lock lock, nigga. <laughs> 32 and a half points, rebounds, and assists. I feel like he'll have 20, have about eight rebounds. About five. Damn, he don't pass like that. Let me see. Damn, they only got him for three and a half assists. He might get four. Ah. Four, he had four assists last game. All right, yeah, I'm I'm locking it in. Jalen Brown, 32 and a half, over. Go ahead, Marcel. Well, you know, um, it's been rough. It's, it's really been rough. Viewers who've been tailing. I started off hot 3 0, but we're going to get back on track this week. We're going to go Jimmy Butler, over rebound, seven. Ooh, that's a good pick. Dad, what you got? Man, I'm going to do the first half NBA points. I'm going to pick Jason Tatum, 15 and a half over. First half. Dad want to get his shit out of the way. Yeah. I'm going to know quick. Y'all right. know we're going to the club quick. Hey, hey, you talking about? Speaking of coming to the club, welcome Ryan Fam to the show, man. Yeah. I, I always pride myself in being a diverse company. So I had to bring the bastard in so y'all can see <laughs> the garbage bastard who worked hard behind the scenes. <laughs> Ryan, are, are you familiar with prize picks? I am. All right, who do you like this week? I'm going to do Bam, 17 and a half points under. Damn, Ryan might be coming in hot, Ryan, this motherfucker. That's a good pick. That's a great pick. Dumb, I seen the look on your face. Did he take your pick? Yeah, that's all good. I'm going to go with my boy, man. I'm going to go with Ryan. Me and Ryan going to team up on this one. We going to go bam, under 17 and a half. I never thought I'd see the day you do a joint pick. You know what I'm saying? Jimmy, uh, on the road, he has to... Jimmy has to go crazy on the road, so I think he's going to... Uh, I don't think Bam's going to have as many opportunities. That's that's a good pick. We might gotta add Ryan. Ryan, uh, Ryan, if you get this pick right, you will be on the next episode to pick again. If not, so look. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, it's been rough. We had high high dream. The uh, our first entries. That first week, we only missed by one. And I think that was only Thad for <laughs> that week. We just knew next week we was going to be in the club. I don't think we ever, we, we haven't even been seeing the parking lot lately. <laughs> but this might be the week. It's the week. This might be the week. It's the week. Broken play is in the motherfucking building. You see the sparklers in there. You see the motherfucking 1942 bottles go. Oh shit! Oh shit! They got VG water. Oh these niggas don't brought a platter of hot wings. Bitches, stand the fuck back. I can't wait, dog. I cannot wait. Speaking of waiting, the wait is over. We got the legendary ticket Jerry in the building. <laughs> And that's why I like Broken Play. ESPN, I be seeing the guests they do. I saw you, Stephen A. Smith, stealing my guests. Nigga, if I see you steal Ticket Jerry, I promise you I'm going to knock you in your shit. Because <laughs> Ticket Jerry don't even do interviews. That when I had to start realizing how I could beat these niggas at their own game. 
Because he saw Tip on my show. He said, damn, let me get Tip on the show and do the same interview I just saw this young popping ass reporter do. Because I know how they refer to me as. I'm getting the feedback. They said, man, this nigga taking the lead by storm. <laughs> Word. And they had Drewski that night, too. It was crazy. <laughs> crazy. Marcel, tell me you fucking lying. They had Drewski and T.I. the same night. Bro, they watching my <laughs> shit, dog. So that's why I said I'm going to bring Ticket Jerry, an underground legend. Yeah. And we're going gonna to get insight from him. Stephen A., nigga, just ask me to be on your show. Because you know you can't come here. He's scared. <laughs> he don't know what we might do. He might hit your ass with one of these lights in this motherfucker. <laughs> you get to talking crazy. You get to screaming on my show. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. Woo, nigga. <laughs> nigga, hit your ass in the head with one of these calendars. <laughs> That's why niggas don't want to come to this show, and I don't blame them. But Ticket Jerry went scared. So clap it up for Ticket Jerry. When we get back, we got Ticket Jerry in the building. <laughs> On Broken Plate. Hey, the summertime is upon us, fellas. Hey, don't be going outside. Because now you, you competing with other people who use the Bluetooth. And if you come in there and you don't run, and somebody got the Bluetooth, your number getting deleted. And that's because you didn't want to take our advice and go to Bluetooth.com. Bluetooth trying to help you. You can't compete. That's like, that's like going against somebody else who's on steroids and been training all year. And you just think you finna go in the bedroom and compete with that? Blue Chew is that extra... Blue Chew is like LeBron James. And you gonna be like somebody coming out of middle school basketball game. It won't add up. Go to BlueChew.com, man. Stop playing. I'm ready. We got the legend, the man, the mirror. I'm, I'm excited about this interview. Let's, get, let's, let's make a lot of noise for the one and only Ticket Jerry, man. Yeah. A, a lot of people, you hear the name, but you never seen the face. Yeah, a lot of people, they, they just don't know. You got to know to know. But Ticket Jerry, you are all the sport events. It ain't like you be high. It ain't like you a low-key nigga. Yeah, all of them. Shit, you damn near. The, you was at the Haney fight. The nigga damn near was in the ring. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, it's never an event you done miss. Part of my job, man. I've been doing it for 22 years. It's part of my job. 22 man. years. Nigga look, nigga look younger than me. <laughs> See, when you get that money and you having fun, you look younger. <laughs> so look, so you were just at the Haney fight. Yes, sir. Do you think this shit was called correctly? No, that definitely wasn't called correctly, man. As a matter of fact, you know, when they, when they announced the winner, they booed them. You know, everybody was, everybody was Loma fans in there, man. Like, I mean, because it's got to do with the race, too. It was probably like 70% white, 30% black. Wasn't that many of us in there? Even though uh -huh. from Oakland. Wasn't that many of us in there, you know, that was rooting for them. But Loma, Loma put it to them, man. I don't see they, the worst case scenario. It should have been a draw. It should have been a draw at the worst case scenario. So you, by you actually being there, was, was like the crowd shocked? Yeah, we was all shocked. Crowd was shocked. No, dead shocked. But it's like, it reminded me of something. It reminded me of that, that Mayweather and Pacquiao fight when we was in there. Everybody thought Pacquiao won. But, you know, Mayweather, you know, the first time Mayweather won that first fight. And boxing, too, that's because on TV you can see sometimes better than... Yeah, when you Better watching when, it yeah, live. Yeah, when you watching it live. Uh -huh. And then, you know, boxing got all the, all the points and little tic-tac tick, tick little things. But, I mean, Loma, man, I was, me personally, he won that fight, man. I, like I it went even close. Him. Yeah, they robbed him with no gun. <laughs> no gun. <laughs> hey, so tell me this, Ticket Jerry. You done been to all these sporting events. Like, you, you know what I'm saying? You done made sure everybody who want to go to sporting events be straight and you still be there. What's an event, like how do you pick and choose? Like if something happened on the same day, you just, 
Like, if, what, what you a bigger fan of, boxing or basketball or football? Yeah, definitely boxing. Boxing probably. They all happen on the same day. Now it's easy. Um, stuff mobile. So, you know, cash at me. I send your ticket, be on your way. So I can work by four events mm-hmm. in a day if I wanted to now. But I'm um, talking about what you will go to. What would I go to, yeah. man? Because you got to be there, so which one you if it, choose? If it ain't no Super Bowl, I'm, I'm going to box it. If it ain't no Super Bowl. Mm. If it ain't no Super Bowl or last game, I know game seven or something like that, yeah. I'm definitely at a boxing event, man. Boxing definitely didn't became my thing, man. So you into the box. Who, who, who do you want to see Haney? Do you think Haney got a chance with Tank? Nah, Haney ain't got no chance with Tank. Haney ain't got no chance with Tank, despite what everybody say. There ain't no way. Like, uh, See, Shakur, that... I definitely think uh, Shakur and, um, is number two now. Haney was my number two, but... It ain't even... Yeah, I, so I saw look, he... Would he you want to see Shakur and Haney fight? Yeah, Shakur and Haney going to have to fight, then the winner going to fight Javante. It's going to be. I already been told it's, it's going to be kind of like playoff style. Man, I, I, I just don't see nobody could, could fuck with Tank right now. Man, he hit bro. too hard. He hit too hard. It got bro, hard. like, that shit, when, it, you, when I saw that Garcia fight, it's like, yeah, stop doing this. <laughs> like, either, either they going to have to go make a nigga <laughs> and create a nigga in the lab or something, but right now he weight class, the nigga hit too hard. You saw him take that dive, man. He got in that ring and realized they were real. Really reminded me of that uh, Adrian Brunner fight. When Adrian Brunner fight, fought Pacquiao that time, man, in Vegas, man. I think Adrian, he was way in over his head. He got in the ring with Pacquiao, man. I swear, after the first round, he did that look in the head. Is his eyes like, man, I done fucked up. Yeah, I, hey, <laughs> I done, Nigga, I I'm not even supposed up. to be here, nigga. Yeah, hell yeah. Yeah, yeah hey, Pacquiao took he, it to his ass. He let Floyd get in his head. Floyd Brown like, man, that nigga ain't shit. He was like, yeah, you right. I'm going to go beat his ass. <laughs> Pacquiao showed they had too. <laughs> ticket, sure. Jared. What what got you into like the ticket, the ticket game? Man, like, I just bro, started it's like off you just standing out. It ain't even close. Nah, I'm just selling um, just selling newspaper when I was about 15 or 16 at the uh, Atlanta Fordham County Stadium uh-huh. for the Braves game. I just used to be out there up until about 20 or something like that. Now nah, people used to use always give me tickets. I'm like, man, what the hell you do with these, dude? dude. To the OG came one day, Buka Ball, shout out to Buka Ball. He came one day and said, hey man, come see what it's about. When I was about 20 years old. So yeah. shit, I went, first event was like an Auburn uh, football game. We drove like an hour, 45 minutes. I remember that day Auburn played Florida that, that game. And, that, and, and them games, them SEC games be big. Yeah, they be big. You know, we talking about 100,000, 100,000 white people love, love football, going to pay whatever. Man, I worked that, made that money. I said, boy, I ain't never picking up another newspaper to sell a game again. <laughs> I just took that, I took that and ran with it, man. I took that and ran with it. And just always wanted to be different, you know, kind of like a service concierge to, to people, you know. Yeah. It's just, I wanted to be with my clientele. It was all about clientele. Hey, that's anything you do. I always let everybody know what you do, man. Like, I don't care you mop floor. You can tell everybody you mop floors, because you, you never know who might need your services one Right, so and then it's, it's how you do the shit. Yeah. Because if you think of somebody just tell you, like, such and such sell ticket, but when they meet, they were like, Nigga, I think it's a niggas want to get their damn tickets from Ticket Jerry more than they. I think niggas trust you more than Ticket Master. <laughs> yeah, they do, man. <laughs> they do. I mean, sometimes you know I got better prices than them. They got better prices than me. But ultimately, yeah, everybody just want to come shout me. Like nigga, me, nigga, say that for. Oh no, I got these from Ticket Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> like nigga, want to say that? What the most you ever done sold a ticket for? Man, most I ever sold a ticket. It was for, a Super Bowl though. It was definitely a Super Bowl. It was um back in Arizona. That probably was about nine years ago. You know, they just had one in this one in Arizona this mm-hmm. year I went to. That was probably like, yeah, about nine, ten years ago. Uh, the Patri- Patriot were playing. It was a real high demand because uh, got people, you know, ticket brokers take orders. They take orders not having the tickets. And that, you know, Phoenix uh, Stadium was one of the smallest stadiums in the NFL. So that that gives just a lot of busted orders. You know they couldn't fulfill what they say they yeah. say they had. You know <laughs> who they, they had to come yeah. holler. At. Yeah, they co- had to come see me. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm on Seahawks. Yeah, Patriots Seahawks. Yeah, I'm, I'm on the street. And streets. that's when uh, the Patriots won, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was, yeah, that's when yeah, came, 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 came up short. Up. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. He came up short. Yeah, man, I probably sold uh, man. I rest. I hope y'all ain't watching this shit. That wasn't me. It was so this shit. Hey, now nah, they ain't like, watching this shit yet. <laughs> it was like eight tickets, man. It had to be like, man, eight tickets for seventy five thousand or something like that. I sold like eight tickets on the fifty yard line, row four. I remember that. Like, 
Yeah, like eight tickets for. Man, clap it yeah. up for a real nigga getting that motherfucking bang. <laughs> They didn't make that much that damn day. <laughs> Nigga, watch this shit, man. I be damned. Yeah, nah, that was just one deal that day, though. That that day was that day was a that was a good day. day. So you look, day. was you at? A, I, well, um, that's a dumb question. How you felt after the Falcons and uh, Patriots Super Bowl? Hey, it was so funny, man, because, you know, like at halftime, we celebrate them in there drunk, you know. Yeah. We talking shit. I ain't going to cap them Patriots fans. They hate it, you know, because they real, you know, excuse my language, they real white people because, yeah. you know, they white people different from <laughs> our white people. They yeah. like hard-working yeah. industrial. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, feel, yeah. They like, talk they shit, like too. Fan. Yeah, they don't really care if you're black, they don't, yeah. you know. Now, here a little bit more Southern hospitality, but they was like, man, I ain't going to lie. I had one say, Ian, shut up. Like, for real. Yeah. And I'm like... Oh, you can say nigga on this show? Oh, I was like, okay. And I'm like, crap, what, what the fuck you... <laughs> you know, that my Atlanta kicked in for a second. Yeah. And I remember I'm at a corporate event. Let me call, let me calm down, because you know that's what Super Bowl's more... It's more corp, 70% corporate, probably 30% fans. Because mm-hmm. that's how they do their deals and stuff. Like, come here, like, we're going to... Let's chop it up at yeah, the Super Bowl. Yeah, all the employees and all, yeah. all that kind of stuff. So, you know, first half, everybody was rooting for the Falcons. I mean, everybody rooting for the Falcons. But man, that second half when they started coming back, I'm like, oh, okay, they, they, we ain't gonna let them get away. No touchdown. Oh, I ain't worried about that shit. No touchdown. We, I'm like, hold up, man. Then on the fourth quarter, we'll be like, what, three minutes left, man. The man came. It was a, it was an announcer in the game that y'all didn't see. It's coming down to the wire. What is Tom Brady gonna do? Is he gonna make another spectacular whoop de whoop? He started talking that shit. I said, we lost. In my head, I said after he said that. I was like, we lost. Like, we damn sure no lost and just coming out, man. Y'all the white man. They were, yeah, they, they, you, you, you couldn't make them shit the fuck up, dude. Hey, that shit was hurtful, man. I'm in third quarter, like, bro, I already know it's going to be a lit ass after party. You are, AG having something new, oh, Mogul having man. something. I'm like, oh, man, yeah, they just took the woo. What a time to be alive. If yeah, that I, shit would have went down, man, the, the Hawks ticket prices would have went up. Everything, because now niggas just going to be in Atlanta for no reason. Yeah. Because we're going to still have a parade going. Nigga, we'll still have a party from that Super Bowl that weekend. Yeah, yeah. yeah there we go. <laughs> throw come, that shit back up in the Come to the Falcons post-game Super Bowl. <laughs> it's just five years later. We still celebrating every weekend. We'll have Matt Ryan and that bitch drunk as a motherfucker. Yeah. Man, for real, man. I, when I think about that, that's crazy. Hey, who an athlete that you met? Like, cause you had all the sporting events. I keep saying that, cause you really, if y'all ain't following Ticket Jerry, only real players could follow you. If a nigga a hater and he follow you, that nigga might commit. <laughs> so, you know, I don't know if we can say that word on this one. You know, they take that shit. Say, Have your mental health up the part if you following Ticket Jerry. That nigga at the restaurant you niggas can't go to. But what's an athlete that you met, you like, God damn, that you got to chop it up with? Man, I just did that with Conor McGregor. Actually. For real? Wow. Yeah, Conor McGregor at the Davis fight. It was just, you know, we were back back after the fight. Uh-huh. He just walked past. I'm like, God damn. I'm like, damn, this is Conor McGregor. Yeah. Oh, what's up, man? He kind of got them tips. I ain't going to lie. What's man going on with the woo? So we sat there, chopped up for a minute. I'm like, damn, man. You know, he's a white boy cool as hell. Yeah. Good yeah, and drunk. I, yeah, good and drunk. Good and drunk. Tyson. I said, Mike Tyson? Like, yeah, Mike Tyson. Like, so that you, shit don't just, really, you don't really be big on the, the basketball and football players like you're a boxer. No, I don't, it's like you be I more got, excited about boxing. I got, a few, I got a few football players. As you know, my boy Bobby, he played for the, played for the Bills. You know, the, um, the Cincinnati uh, Jesse, who just got traded to the Falcons. Uh-huh. Yeah, I, I chop it up with uh, You know Lou Will, that's my main man. Oh, man, Lou, Lou Will. Will. My, Lou Will, my Shout main man. Will, that's man. a solid. That's a solid nigga, man, for real. That's my main man. So yeah, it's just, it's just pin, man. Who were some of your favorite athletes growing up? You said you worked the Braves Stadium. Like, did you care about the Braves? I mean, game? Dion. Oh, you, Dion, Dion for, for sure, Dion. For sure, Dion, man. The way he used to come to the, you know, because we used to see him come in the tunnel for the game. He in the convertible with all that Jerry on, Jerry Curl Juice going there, motherfucking yeah. well. Yeah. Coming to the Braves Stadium like that? Yeah, yeah. When he hey, prayed that for, shit pipe. When he prayed for the Braves, man. That was his good old day, man. Yeah, like him. 
Oh, who else? Holy, like everybody else, Holyfield. Yeah, everybody, for sure. Cause he's from Atlanta. Holyfield, man, funny ass story. We see him and Ryan's on like Jonesboro Road. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about this. Shout the out to Ryan's. They don't know that's a buffet <laughs> place, nigga. Where you supposed to go out to church every Sunday or go when somebody done graduated. But go, yeah, that would be nine ninety nine. But yeah, he got yeah. his whole family. And damn rhymes. Like, he's just man, kicking it. You know, he's just kicking it like, yeah, like, hey, Holyfield and rhymes. Like, yeah. You know, because that's when he had the big old house, you know, before the Rick Ross right. theatrics and, and hell yeah. But uh, Dominique, I mean, all the true Atlantis, you know, Spud Webb. Uh huh. All that, you know. Yeah, for sure. So look, was you was you going to sporting events? Like I know you said you worked in the break, but before that, was you like a big fan, like wanting to go to sporting events? I mean, like, yeah, I always I've been going to sporting events as a younger, you know, my pops, RIP used to always take me to Braves game, mm-hmm. Falcon game, shit, boys and girls club, we used to go to, you know, when the Falcon was sorry as hell, we used to yeah. have to go sit out oh, there. Oh, that you man, and that, one thing about growing up in Atlanta, nigga, you ain't never been to no Falcon game, nigga, it's your fault. Nigga, they'll walk you down to the field and ask, do you want to play sometime? <laughs> that shit was so... Because you remember the game used to be blacked out. Yeah. Niggas don't yeah. remember that shit. They are black. We couldn't even watch yeah, the fucking Yeah, if you didn't out the game, you'd be blacked out. Yeah, you it'd be to blacked out. Shit. Yeah. Bro, yeah. like, because they don't want to show that on TV, how empty the bitch was. <laughs> so it would be blacked out. You would, watch, you would have to watch. That's why I was a Cowboy fan growing up. That's all I saw. Bro, bro, not from... Like in the 90s, that's all you really could watch was either the Cowboys or the 49ers. You ain't watching no goddamn Falcons. <laughs> Until goddamn they start doing that Dirty Bird shit. Jamal Anderson. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then once Vic came, it was a wrap. I don't think they ever seen a blackout. When Vic came, it was a wrap. Man, them fashion show game with Vic here, man. Everybody just went to... Throw some fly shit on. We were motherfuckers in minks and everything else in the joint. When, when Vic was coming? Yeah, when Vic was. That was like a star study more than fucking football shit. That, that shit was wild. Hey, so, Ticket Jerry, so, like, when you go to events now, because, like, you, you, you got the, you know what I mean? You, you had the best seats in the house when you go to go places and shit. You damn near be, you know, sitting with the players. Like, so you really have to be putting that shit on your damn self. Yeah, I put that shit on a little yeah. bit. I'm, 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 I'm going to put that shit on a little bit now. You got, you got to see me, man. I'm a, rebel, I'm a res, representation of my business. This is, a, you know, bro, the reason why they want... Bro, have niggas ever pulled you to the side and be like, bro, what do you do? Yeah, all the time. Now nah, it's so funny, man, because, you know, I go to a lot of major events. So last I was in Denver at the All-Star Game. Uh-huh. You know, that's just, you know, drug connections, just shit be happening now. Yeah. Motherfucker puts me to the side, think I'm selling weed. Yeah. Not knowing at the time, boy, I need this shit bad. I ain't bringing no goddamn seven with me. Yeah. I'm in goddamn Utah. I can't find no reefer. So I fronted like a goddamn drug deal. I'm like, yeah, bro, let me see what you got. Let me sample that shit. Uh-huh. Gave me a sample, man. I ain't never called that motherfucker again. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't, hey, hey, bro. That I sell tickets. <laughs> well, I meant the plug, boy. It's going to be up. He got them fucking with the shit. <laughs> and they just wanted a little blunt from it. Yeah, I just wanted my little guy. Hey, my little seven about the shit, man. But yeah, uh, cause you, you gotta think if you just watch, like he play, yeah, he plays some sport or some ain't no way this nigga sitting there damn close. Yeah, this nigga do something. Like even when uh, when I was just at the fight, he was like, "What you do?" I said, "I sell, I sell tickets." He was looking at my neck. I'm like, damn, "You sell a lot of tickets, don't you?" I say, "Damn fucking right, I do." Yeah, like, you yeah. talking about. <laughs> Ticket Jerry, I feel like you could be on Unsung or something on TV One or something. Yeah, I'm low key. I'm low key, man. I came out because you, bro. You know, I don't yeah. do no that podcast. Was that, that no. Was I came out because you, my partner. I fuck with you, you funny, man, because I fuck with you, dog. Man, look, they laughing because they don't know. We've been talking, bro. I had, um, we, they had the Mike Elton comedy show. I come out there. Ticket Jerry said he was going to be there. So I said, I know the nigga gonna be sent. Like, it never fails. Like, you, like, bro, it's like, as a person, like, that'll make you rearrange your whole life. Nigga go to school and say they gonna do this and be this. Like, nigga, no one ever would think, like, this nigga, you, you lit on selling tickets. <laughs> All right, I can't play, man. It's, I know where to sit, though, bro. Like, when that camera <laughs> hits you at the angle, nah, I know what section and what row. You see how your, your show, nigga, I was dead center. Yeah. Like, so this nigga got to see me. I'm like, my nigga gonna see me. You gonna, you got to see me. I'm right here in the yeah. front, nigga. I ain't all the way to the front row. I'm like the third row. So but you it just was, know how to position yeah, that I shit? Yeah, I just know how to position myself after 20-something years, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, shout out. Uh, 
We was in here talking. Dumb had said, he said, man, he said, I text Ticket Jerry on my birthday to try to get it. He asked you about some Chappelle tickets. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think he, like, people, like, it's just like a, I feel like it done came down to a privilege. Marcel, have you ever bought some tickets from Ticket Jerry? Nah, I, I just I just know the name from from being around, like, yo, Ticket Jerry, Ticket Jerry. So it's just crazy just meeting them just now. Like, it's crazy. And you know me, I don't too tough studying that shit, bro. I live yeah. my own little yeah, mother. Yeah, you low key. I ain't, yeah, I ain't, you know, humble when you meet me. Shit, I'm still saying, you know, I ain't changing nothing, man. So, you know, I don't even go around knowing that people heard of me. Like, that shit really don't, nah, really don't nah, pay me no mind. Like around that. the city, man, for sure. Bro, and I think it done got, like, it's not even so much the city no more. Like, it's like, anyway, you be like, you got to holler at Ticket Jerry. You got to holler at Ticket Jerry. So with the finals, whether that shit be in Miami or Denver, which one would you rather be? You would rather be at the Miami I'm game. I'm Miami. I'm Miami, man. I just put that on Instagram last night. I'm Miami because I ain't missed the Miami final. Remember, OKC played them. Uh-huh. When Kevin Durant then was right. out, went down for that final. Uh-huh. Then, um, you know, LeBron, when LeBron played Dallas, I was down there for that final. Do you fuck with LeBron? Nah, you know, fuck, bro. I don't fuck, I don't fuck I with shit. That, I don't fuck with shit. I don't fuck with shit, bro. I'm telling you, you I ain't never. You were mad about that Warriors series. Hey, man, man hey. I ain't never told nobody why, man. Let me, let me okay. tell you why I hate you, bro. We got a hit. I ain't gonna count. He was down in Miami. He was giving Miami the best years of his life. And now when I used to fly down to a Miami game, mm-hmm. you know, they had the club inside. You go into goddamn the restaurant, Prime 112 after that. And sure. that was good when he was down there about three years. Mm-hmm. So I was kind of pissed when they burnt Let the Heat jersey too, nigga. I burnt the Heat jersey too. <laughs> you gonna fuck up my fun, nigga. I'm flying down there, you know, shit. Hey, <laughs> hey let go, let, let get on. Yeah. We going to a game, pop our shit. And then you want to goddamn just leave this shit to go back to, but the broke ass clip. I'm like, <laughs> you're man, still bro, mad about that still shit. mad about that shit, bro. That why that why I hate Shabron, man. That's the only. Other than that, man, you know he a great role model, good at every businessman, <laughs> great at everything he does, man. But he took my fun away, man. That shit hurt me. Fuck that. For real. Hey, like you, <laughs> bro, you can see the pain in your eyes with that. I shit. mean, the club, they nigga, they got a club in their arena in Miami. A club, literally, imagine you going to the dressing room and then you going straight to the club in that, the arena. That man. shit was so, never the same after that. That you know, shit huh? was never the same after that, man. Damn. He had to get one in Cleveland, though, man. You got to respect it. I mean, it. nah, I mean, home is he, he had just been home. Like, why you going, you going back home? Like, that, that ain't really making no sense to me. LA, LA was a great move for him. That's what he needed to be right now. That's you, what he needed to, you, you he needed to retire like him. Yeah, I fuck with that LA. What's the, what's the best city that you done had, like, to go watch a sporting event at? Man, like, that, well, no, I'm gonna say this. What's your favorite sporting event of all time that you done went to? That's in? Super Bowl. That's Super Bowl. What did this year make my ninth? Ninth Super Bowl? Mm-hmm. Super Bowl gonna be the, the greatest thing you could ever go to other than something like World Cup. Because it's number two televised. World Cup is definitely number one. Mm-hmm. But you know, World Cup, that shit about, what, two, three weeks or something? Yeah, no, yeah. No, Super Bowl ain't number one. One, day. one night. So to me, that, that's pretty good. That's, to Which me, one that's been your favorite, one. though? Man, when the lights went out. When the lights went out in New that Orleans San and Baltimore. Francisco. Baltimore and San Francisco, yeah. San Francisco and Baltimore, wasn't it? Yeah, San Francisco and Baltimore. And we, in the inside, the lights didn't really go out. Only in the, uh, only in the concourse, the lights had went out. But at home, it looked like the lights was out everywhere. Now, it was only in the concourse that the lights went out. That's from everybody say Beyonce used all the electricity. <laughs> I mean, because she was lighting that motherfucker up half time. Really? You know, yeah, Beyonce did that motherfucking thing. But, uh, you know, that's when they had, uh, San Francisco was up. Then after that, came back, like, nah, they, we can't let no, nah, we can't let no black man with, nah. And that's when the Ravens Kaepernick, just jumped on yeah. the head. Yeah, jumped that, on was, that, was, that, was, that was a wild one right there. That was definitely... One of the best Super Bowl, but just behind that it had to be like 2021, when uh, you know the um, the Corona Super Bowl, they had everybody socially distanced. See, that's the number one highest Super Bowl of all time. Uh, I remember upper level going for like nine thousand each when I used usually average about four thousand. <laughs> uh, I sat on the fifty yard line that game. They were going for twenty five thousand. At twenty five thousand. So you slick sometimes to get high off your own supply. Yeah, I get high. Yeah, I, I get high my own supply. The shit ain't free now. Yeah, I wish the motherfucker were free. <laughs> yeah. Nah, the shit ain't free now. I get high off my own supply, but that just pump back into the business. Just yeah, because it's, like, it's, it's like an investment. Yeah. So that Super Bowl, they had the cardboard people. 
Tripped me the fuck out. Tom Brady. Oh, yeah. 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 Tom Chiefs, Bra- Chiefs and Buccaneers. First time ever at home. That was the had- Chiefs and Buccaneers one? Yeah, that and was Chiefs in the Tom Brady That was. was the first time ever somebody had played the Super Bowl in their own home state. Yeah. That's the first time ever. They had like fucking cardboard people. I had Pat Mahomes for whatever right then, too. Yes, the noise well, that wasn't my real. My whatever be different than the other niggas. My whatever was like, you know, they kept money type shit. I got, I got, <laughs> a, I got a quick question. How has the um, ticket game changed for you throughout the years, you know, dealing with bots and stuff, like Ticketmaster prices going crazy and whatnot nowadays for concerts or whatever? Man, I tell you what, since we come over, it's not 90% of my, 90% of my um, like peers. And, you know, because we used to go to the streets and, you know, if Fountain got a game, we're going to the game. We hustling outside, you know, getting it from the corporate people who don't need them. Somebody got sick, didn't show up. That's why you see, I always see the event sometimes. I need tickets. Motherfucker, like, what the fuck are you doing? I need tickets. Man, there's always somebody that ain't going to show up. Somebody going to want to make some bill man, off that shit. Just always that type of shit that's gonna happen, the hand to hand transaction, the money, you know. But now with the mobile and the cash app, it didn't change so much. I mean, me, I'm always gonna have my plugs, you know, because I got greater clientele now. You know, everybody wanna sit on the floor, you know, that type of clientele. So dealing with me, I'm always keeping, have those kind of seats, but it's definitely evolved. I mean, you gotta evolve with everything you do in business. I just so happen to evolve. It's like 90% of my, my fellow, you know, coworkers didn't evolve, you know, I don't think I'm special. I think I just formatted after the right business plan what I wanted to go oh. after, but yeah, it's, it's, it's kind so of- So you got plenty of peers in the game, but it's just like, you don't like, you still, like y'all show love and stuff, but it's just, you know, some people just stand out Oh differently. yeah, it's a brotherhood, man. It's yeah. a brotherhood, especially when we used to go out to events, hand-to-hand tickets, you know, like that was before Corona. It, everything changed after Corona, but yeah, before Corona, it's, it's like, it's a brotherhood, man. Like I'm going to LA, Hey, boy, you, you know, you straight. Yeah, I know you. you know, okay, hey, boy, you need, so it'd be you like niggas in weed. different yeah, areas yeah, of niggas the world in, that y'all in area. I'm like, and I'm the only person that can go to all the areas in the United States. It's kind of crazy. If y'all seen this shit, like, it'll probably blow some mind. Cincinnati, Cincinnati got a crew. Hey, y'all, I'm here. Oh, boy, we know we're going to make some money. Take a Jerry in the building, New yeah. York, like Miami. It's like, it like the big dog here. Like, we got a guy there. Hey. Yeah, 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 but shit, they all know me because I, I, I'm like the youngest, and you keep the youngest in the game. Yeah, yeah so hell yeah, I, just, I always want to see people get money. Like, man, scalping on the street, you could be selling the tickets, nigga, come right in front of you. I got it for cheaper. That's what we call cutting it. Yeah. I mean, in this Atlanta, that's what we known for. We treacherous for that. You better goddamn, you got to hurry up, close that deal, make that money for another nigga going to cut you. Then no city, some nigga get to fighting. Hey, I didn't see some nigga get to shooting behind you. Yeah. But yeah, like that shit just it's made the shit me, you know. That's shit they don't hear about. Yeah, nah, yeah, they all, that's, that shit rough. But shit, I just had a common respect for everybody around the world, man. You know, shit, I just want all scalpers to get money, you know. And that's why everybody respect me, man. Man, for sure. I'm gonna ask you this. What, what's an event that you couldn't get no tickets to? Man, the, what, just Taylor Swift that just happened? Taylor Swift, it just happened. Uh, Shout out to Taylor Swift. God man, man, that shit was... Jerry scratching your head right Scratching my mother... That shit was phenomenal, man. The three shows sold out every night. I mean, her cheapest ticket... You couldn't get for, one ticket? Man, I couldn't get one ticket. I slept on her, man. I couldn't... I ain't think it was that. I, I, <laughs> man, I had a chance, bro, to get about 10 tickets for at least, like, $575 a piece. The same tickets end up going for $3,500 a piece. Boy, I was so motherfucking pissed, 3, man. 3000 flip. That's 30 man, that, that, hey, God bro, I'm damn, like. I'm doing the wrong shit out here, man. I'm yeah. like, this this little girl, hey, Beyonce, I can't see her. Nigga, Russ Hell ain't no. doing that type of shit. <laughs> you had the best pack in the world. What you got for him, Thad? Man, you know, you mm-hmm. know. Oh yeah, I'm definitely gonna have World Cup. I'm He's going, been a I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to World Cup. That's that's an event to go to because even that first year when when we won, the, you know, the soccer, that was the last championship Atlanta ever won. Atlanta United. Yeah. You know, I went to the first soccer game. I'm like, man, I ain't never been no motherfucking soccer. I'm a nigga, bro. I ain't going to uh-huh. soccer. Yeah. I went, man, that shit was lit. I'm really? talking about that shit better than Falcon Bray. Goddamn jumping up and down the whole game, man. I said these white folks. Is a man, be drunk, drunk, man. I said these white folks off the motherfucking chain. I ain't finna miss no soccer game like that ass for real. You ain't never been to, y'all ain't never been to soccer, man. Check out soccer, man. That shit ain't yeah, you I'm might not with. understand what the fuck going on. I didn't either. I had the liquor. So man, that shit was a try soccer, trust me. 
For real. I got, I got to fuck with that shit. Damn, I was just about to ask you something, man. You just blew my mind with the soccer shit. So, but no, you better got them work on your um, other languages and shit when you want to sell them World Cup tickets and shit. Oh, no, I'm going to have the goddamn translate out right on the phone right now. <laughs> Fuck you, say hell, I say, hey, we're going we gonna to come to agreement now. We're going to get yeah. that, that money green. We're we going to make that <laughs> shit happen. Now. Play. Yeah, hell yeah. Out of, out of your 22 years in the game, have a transaction ever went? Because look, I will say this. I never heard no smear on your name. Like, you know what I'm saying? You know how people might fuck up on Ticket. Like, if it did, it probably pre social media, but I never heard nobody be like, damn, Ticket Jerry didn't come through it. He got damn fucked me over on these. Nobody ever said nothing bad. Nah, on. yeah, I done had plenty of slip ups, though, but I just always correct mine. You, mm. you know, you got niggas that run off on you. You know, you, know, you got a whole community of fucking scalping to sell fake tickets. Like, that's a real. Nigga, real thing. Nigga, mm -hmm. they go run every event, goddamn counterfeiting tickets. That, sh that shit is real. So people always come to me because they know they can always come back to me. That's how I built, you know, my, my customer base, just being truthful. I mean, of course, I didn't have people cancel tickets on me because that was the thing back in the day when you had hard tickets. You know, you might be a season ticket holder, come out there to the Falcon game, selling to me, hey, boom, they made your money. Hey, Falcons, I just lost my ticket. Can y'all reprint me some more? Oh, man. Yeah, and that, that became a, like a huge problem, main, mainly why they went digital, because a lot of Lakers fans were doing it when the Lakers were winning. You know, when they first got LeBron, no ticket on for four, 5000 They'll come out, sell them to a scalper, or meet somebody on Chris, listen, sell it to them. Like, hey, my season ticket just been stolen. It's like what you gonna do? You can't. Like, do, you can't can you, oh, yeah, you man. can't do nothing about it. So yeah, it's it's like at the game we don't know. Yeah, it's like why this shit broke and play, man. It's a lot of shit of shit to go on, but I just always, man, if I get a bad ticket or sit you in the wrong seat, man, I'm gonna correct it, man. You might be in the game watching that motherfucker. Hey, Jeron, like this. Hey, let me see what I can do. Boo, boo, boo. Hey, man, go sit in these seats. Mm. Like that's a way better ticket. Like my customer service, just I try to make it immaculate, man. Nigga got a hundred percent Yelp review out of this motherfucker. Y'all playing. Man, Ticket Jay, I appreciate you pushing up. I know you got plenty of shit to do, shit coming up. Oh uh, yeah, for sure, man. I appreciate y'all. Hey, what, what what them finals prices looking like? Man, that ain't gonna be too bad there in Miami. You know, regular lower level, probably about nine hundred. Um, where I be sitting about three, four thousand, actually on the floor. Man, them motherfuckers gonna be twenty-five thousand. Like that shit, that shit. Hey, is, but look, you would have do you sometimes, like, because I know you say you don't, you don't like LeBron, but if a Lakers and Boston series, you would have made some prime time money. It would have been decent, man. It, it definitely would have been. But Miami and Denver won't meet, meet them requirements. But though. people going to go, though. That's basketball, though. That's a good basketball game. But you know, like you the got... NCAA, there, yeah. it wasn't no appealing teams. No, nah, it But you still... champion, that was some good basketball. Because like... you got alumni, they still going to want to come to the game. Yeah, niggas like like nigga still going to hey, go. Well, no, like, I'm still going. You, you got into the uh, the women's. The women's, it was some money to be made with the women's one. Yeah, uh, yeah, the women's final four were good this year. Yeah, mm -hmm. this first year, seven, eight, nine hundred. Yeah, that. It's becoming so more popular. Up. Yeah, it's definitely. You done saw some WNBA tickets with uh, them? Yeah, of course I have. Yeah, of course, to the Dream. Yeah. Okay. Dreams, uh, when they play Chicago Sky. Like, that's Shout always out to Angel McCartry, man. Yeah, hell yeah. Shout out to Ty. You know, when she used to play for Chicago, that one, um, you know, shit used to be popping back in them days. Yeah, so yeah, hell for yeah. For sure. The WNBA, too. All that. NASCAR, what you want? Everything. You don't sell NASCAR tickets? Yeah, hell yeah. Oh, man. Y'all get Ticket Jerry up, man. man. I used to go to, man, one store before we get out. I used to go to NASCAR races and, you know, out there to work the venue. Man, uh -huh. it's one street in Virginia. This is, <clears throat> this is uh, NASCAR race in Virginia. I forget the forget name of it. Uh -huh. Man, they got a street where they still was called. This is 19 now. They were still calling you a nigga if you walk down that street. Because you know that's 100% white people land. Uh -huh. You know, the home. And that's a Commonwealth home. state, too. Yeah, the, the, boy, the trailer park or the trailer park. Yeah, but... Uh, they man, still bought tickets from me. Yeah, they still gonna buy a ticket that they got to. Now, call them what you want to call me. Yeah. Just give my goddamn money. Yeah, go to that nigga got, right there. I got one last one, man. You see Bad Bunny prices, like Beyonce, Drake, even Taylor Swift. What would you say out of those four artists, who would you make the most money off of tickets? Me personally, Beyonce, because my clientele. Mm. You know, my clientele is black. I'm always had my bad money and Taylor Swift customers, but you know, my clientele is black. Now, if you're talking about who making the most money, that's bad money and Taylor Swift. But yeah, per my personal thing gonna be Beyonce. 
You know, that's in three months. Y'all get at me. <laughs> that's in three months. <laughs> hey, man, before you leave, Ticket Jerry, man, anything you want to shout out, anything, man, anything you want to say. Because you know what I'm saying? You don't, you don't talk much. Nah, I don't do so much talking, man. Yeah. Just shout out to all my customers who rep with me in Atlanta, the whole Atlanta, man. You know, I fuck with Atlanta. Born and raised here, high school, all that shit, you know, underground when I was younger, all that shit. Man, Trinidad yeah. had told us uh, when we were sitting down, he, he had said he wrecked one of your cars. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He wrecked it. SRTA. I wasn't even mad at him. That's my partner, man. That's my partner, man. Nick, my partner. You know, we started off as crazy because he used to work at the store in the underground selling the clothes. It was a popular, you know, clothing uh, boutique, Jensen downtown, you know, everybody mm -hmm. in Atlanta went to. And you know, they had like hot mech jeans at the time. Uh -huh. And you know, I had tickets. I had never forget me first, uh, me, Nick, and Dylan with Nick, man. I traded them some Chicago Bull ticket for some mech jeans. Like, that's the mech jeans. You know, mech jeans yeah, like $200, yeah. $300. I traded them some tickets for mech jeans. That's how we met, man. That's how we just became, we became close, man. I remember he was like, man, come out to my show. I come out to your show. Yeah, I'm rapping. Nigga, you rapping? You know how we, that yeah. nigga, man, you see One of these. you rapping? All right, man, I'm coming to your show. Okay, your shit turned. Okay, nigga. Trying to do a little something then. Took off. That shit like, man, like a fucking rocket. I ain't never seen nothing like that shit, like a fucking rocket, dog. Man, you, like, I know we just said you were getting out of here. I got to say that, though. Like, Jerry, you be, like, connected with a lot of rappers and them people know. The first time I, well, you know I done heard your name, but the first time I met you in person, it was with Trouble. R.I.P. Yeah. Trouble. Yeah, R.I.P. Trouble, man. Oh, that's my nigga, man. Yeah, Trouble so cool, like, man. and y'all were going, I saw y'all had were going to plenty of events with each other and stuff like that. Yeah, Who yeah, were some yeah. of your favorite rappers? Man, like I, I did with uh, 2 Chain, man. Before 2 Chain blew up, man, I remember selling them some uh, all-star tickets, NBA all-star game in New Orleans, man. I'm like, my objective, man, I just wanted to get close. Cause I knew we weren't gonna get court side, cause NBA, they don't sell court side seats. It's just, you know, you all, if you're a celebrity, but when they're gonna have people yeah, to come down. Put you out of, yeah. So I said, I need to get this nigga just close as possible. As close as possible. possible. So they can just see this nigga, man. I sat him down there, got him close as possible. Man, ever since then, that nigga took off. Like, I still, and we still laugh about it. Matter of fact, this year, he bought an NBA All Star ticket from me, cause he needed it for security, cause Chain still fuck with me. So yeah, man, he just, he just took off. You see the ownership of the team now? And yeah, like I, I dealt with a lot of crime, client, you know, rap clientele, you know, Rich Homie, mm -hmm. you know, Lil Baby. Oh man, when the NBA oh, yeah, playoff. Oh yeah, yeah, Lil Baby, yeah. yeah, nah, yeah I when, did see that. That shit when goddamn, you all, you made sure he was straight out of Hawks game. Yeah, not man, too I, ago. man, he straight, he bought pretty much a lot of shit from me, just more than the Hawks. Just concerts in the way he want to send his kids, his crew, she bought. Super Bowl tickets from it. Shit, yeah, about by eight Super Bowl tickets. For Shout out to four pockets shit, fooling yeah. in the motherfucking Nah, for video. real. Now yeah. he take care of his partners. Like, yeah. He ain't going to the game. Like, all-star game, he going to get... He gonna get his partner some shit. Like all, all them going. They gonna mob together in there. And I just shout out, he was a cool ass nigga, man. Nigga, that I'm glad from the city, you know. Really from the city and reverend for the city. Still got the same heart. Like that's one of the most humblest niggas I ever met too. Like yeah, that shit crazy though. So, man, we appreciate you coming through, Ticket Jerry. Man, nothing but much more success to you. Hey, hey, if you got a girl, you gotta unfollow <laughs> Ticket Jerry during Valentine's Day week or her birthday. Man, that nigga, hey. Bruh, if you if you know, you know. That nigga Ticket Jerry took his girl to your rainers one year. <laughs> <laughs> nah, not even rainers, probably Paris or something, man. I ain't, hey. I ain't fucking with nowhere like that, man. So we go shopping in Paris, though. Yeah, that made me out of space with that shit, man. <laughs> All right, man. Till next time, man. Appreciate you coming through, Ticket Jerry. Nah, I appreciate y'all. <laughs>